So good morning to both of you. Uh, I think Fatima will also join in in some time. Okay, so what is the plan? So from today, since it's Monday, the first day of the week, let's start off with the last topic of our syllabus, last syllabus area. And of course, I'm also going to take more questions from exam kit, especially from business finance, cost of capital, etc. But I thought let's at least begin with risk management. Okay. This topic, as I said, is a very uh, advanced topic. Although we are going to handle the very basics of risk management in FM, but the concept itself is uh, is of the domain of AFM, Advanced Financial Management. Okay, but we are just going to introduce ourselves to the basics of it. So I'll just start off with this last area of your syllabus and as we move ahead we will also take questions from exam kit okay elza uh, garima am i audible have i made myself clear to you yes now if you look at your study text chapter number 12 13 and 14 are dedicated to risk management. Out of that, chapter number 12 is just a theory. Hardly it should take around 10-15 minutes to understand the concepts. Okay, All theory, like what are financial markets, what are capital markets, what is a money market, and especially, we are going to deal with what is treasury function. You should be able to answer questions, MCQs, related to what are treasury functions. So within financial management, we have a very specialized function called as treasury function. Has anyone got any idea about this term treasury function? So if I ask you, what, what do you understand when I say treasury? What do you think? What could be the possible answer? Treasury. The focus of treasury management has to be Let's imagine, okay, I give you a charge. I give you a responsibility of protecting the treasury. So first of all, we know what is treasury. Treasury means basically cash, resources, especially cash, cash and bank, cash bank account, money, basically money, okay? So a treasury manager, works on two fronts one to enhance the cash to increase it to manage it okay and second also to protect it so we are going to see what are those different circumstances because of which the cash position of a company can be under threat. What do you mean by under threat? Like, let us say, I was supposed to receive $10,000 from a customer. But because of some situations, because of some issues, ultimately, I could receive lesser cash than was expected. By the time money came into my pocket, something happened which was beyond my control. Some market factors came and interfered because of which I could receive only $8,000 for no, no uh, fault of my customer, no fault of mine. But because of some market factors, I could receive only lesser cash. That means I could not protect my cash. I experienced a loss. Make sense? Okay. Now, whatever I do, whatever I do to avoid this happening, okay, is called as treasury management. 
and within treasury management when it comes to protecting your cash the protection element of treasury management is called as risk management okay i guess fatima also is joined in so fatima i'm starting of the week with the last syllabus area risk management and we are going to uh, also go back to our example okay i hope uh, fatima it's clear i you have logged in <clears throat> yes okay so i'm going to start off with risk management slowly and also going back to the exam kit okay but first we'll start off we'll try to understand the concepts okay so elza says could you repeat the last point again what is risk management yes i'll repeat the whole thing quickly we are studying a subject called as financial management okay we are studying a subject called we are studying a subject called financial management now within financial management one of the functions is called as treasury management there are different functions a finance manager has to do one of the most important is treasury management now what is treasury management treasury management is basically ensuring that the cash position of the business is strengthened how can it be strengthened by enhancing by by taking some decisions which enhances increases the levels of cash which you can employ profitably so basically cash management ultimately treasury management focuses on managing the cash okay but not only enhancing but also protecting so there is an element of protection as well so a treasury manager has to ensure that any threat to the level of cash or to the cash inflows or outflows any threat to it needs to be managed something needs to be done some actions are to be taken which will ensure that the cash is protected now what are the possible <clears throat> reasons because of which there can be a uh, because of which there can be a threat to the cash what can be the possible reasons number 1 you are receiving less than you expected okay receiving lesser cash lesser cash like say for example you were supposed to receive 10000 dollars from your customer but something happened now that that something can be anything under the sun like what uh, i think el uh, fatima says robbery yes of course robbery is one of the reasons why lesser cash will will come to you pilferage of cash when the cash is in transit something happens some pilferage happens some loss happens some stealing happens robbery happens whatever some fraud happens and you receive only 8000 or maybe you receive zero you receive nothing you lose the entire 10000 so this is a risk this is called as a risk a cash flow risk so receiving lesser cash is a big threat also paying more cash than was planned excessive cash payment so these are the two reasons which are called as cash flow risks which the treasury manager has to watch out and this protection element this part is called as risk management so our syllabus will be focusing more on the risk management part the cash enhancing part we have already been learning for all these days we have been learning working capital management we were learning investment appraisal within investment appraisal there are certain strategies with which ensures that the value increases okay but protection element of treasury management is very interesting and that is also a part of our syllabus so we are just introducing ourselves as i said risk management is an advanced topic by itself okay but we are just going to learn the a b and c in financial management later on in afm you have some more advanced issues with respect to risk management so 
in your syllabus the focus of risk management will be on cash flow risk now what are the possible reasons because of which now we'll talk about the reasons okay what are the possible reasons because of which your cash flow can be in threat one of the reasons as you said okay is robbery you can say robbery or pilferage what are the other reasons what are the other reasons now i'll give you an example a mr a sold goods to mr b now mr a is in india okay and mr b is in usa you know the currency of india it is inr indian rupee and you know the currency of usa it is usd us dollar okay a has sold goods to b a has sold goods to b now what was the invoice amount the amount of invoice for a the the home currency is indian rupee right the home currency is indian rupee and foreign currency is us dollar similarly for b home currency is us dollars foreign currency is indian rupee now we are talking from the perspective of a let's think from the perspective of a now a has sold goods to b and as is the normal uh, convention the invoice has been made in us dollars that means a has sold goods to b worth 100000 us dollars and b is supposed to pay this 100000 us dollars to a so a is going to receive foreign currency all of you agreed a is going to receive foreign currency from b correct now all of us know that there is something called exchange rate 1 dollar what is the price of 1 dollar just check in your google i allow you to use your mobile phone for a minute google and let me know what is 1 us dollar equal to today not today but right now how many rupees 1 dollar is equal to how many inrs 1 dollar is equal to how many inrs fast so 1 usd is equal to 74.57 very good so 70 uh, let me consider it 74 inr okay now this particular phenomena is called as exchange rate what is it called as exchange rate now this exchange rate 1 usd is equal to 74 rupees is not going to remain stable it's not going to remain stable either 1 usd is going to become expensive or either the price of 1 usd is going to go up or it is going to go down you understanding <clears throat> this is called as the movement in the exchange rates and when 1 usd when 1 usd for example becomes 75 75 inr what can be said what are the possible terms that we can use that dollar has appreciated dollar has appreciated okay or we can also say indian rupee has depreciated this one and the same the impact is the same when one currency becomes expensive in terms of another currency the another another currency becomes cheaper you can try if you you can check if you want like say for example if i ask you to calculate one inr okay was 74 right so one one usd is 74 so one inr would be how much just do one divided by 74 1 divided by 74 so it is 0.013 so dollar 0.01351 0.01351 0 now the same dollar has become expensive 1 dollar was 
now that one dollar has become seventy five. So if one dollar becomes seventy five, what has happened to one INR? One IR, INR will be one divided by seventy five. So this time it will be zero point zero one three three. Okay, it has become so one divided by seventy five was zero point zero. One divided by seventy four was zero point zero one three five. Five. So from zero one three five, it has come down to zero one three three. That means when the dollar becomes expensive, rupee becomes cheaper. Another way of saying it: whenever dollar is appreciated vis-a-vis -vis rupee, rupee is depreciated vis-a-vis -vis dollar. Guys, are you understanding this basic math? Is everyone clear? Fatima says yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. So I'm just trying to develop a base for risk management. Okay. There are many more concepts to learn. Many many concepts to learn. But this is the base. Okay. Base in terms of mathematics, the maths that you need to know, the basic math. So when I say one US dollar is seventy five rupees. One rupee would be one by seventy-five USD. This you should be very clear about. The second thing you should be very clear about is whenever one currency appreciates in terms of another currency, that another currency depreciates in terms of this first currency. So this appreciation and depreciation rule has to be very clear. Now, coming back to our story, A is in India. He has sold goods to B in US. Worth one hundred thousand dollars. Right now, the exchange rate is one USD is equal to seventy four INR. This is the exchange rate right now. Right now means on the date of transaction. This is called as the date of transaction. Let us say that the date is first April twenty twenty one. Okay, on this date. A sold goods to B. So on this date of transaction, exchange rate was one USD is equal to seventy four INR. Okay. Now, is this rate going to remain same? No. It can go anywhere. It can go to seventy five, seventy six, seventy seven. It can also come down to seventy three, seventy two, seventy one. Okay. The rates can go anywhere. However, now please remember. If A receives these one hundred thousand dollars immediately, that means the goods are delivered, and immediately A receives one hundred thousand dollars, then there is no risk. Then there is no risk to A because what is A going to do? Can A use these dollars in India? He has received one hundred thousand dollars from B, but can he use it in India? If I give you dollars, will you be able to even buy anything from the shop? No. You need home currency. All of you agree. You need Indian rupees. If you want to use money in India, you need Indian rupees. So, what should A do once he receives one hundred thousand dollars? What should he do? He should go and the technical word that we use is convert. He is supposed to convert those one hundred thousand dollars into his home currency. Guys, are you all with me? The more you respond for this risk management, better it is for you. Let me say a few things very bluntly. This topic is damn confusing. Very confusing. I'm not even saying. I'm not saying it's difficult. According to me, it's one of the easiest topics. Risk management is the easiest topic in FM AFM. The only trouble is, you need to be alert and you need to learn the things, ask your doubts, ask your queries because it's confusing. Once the confusions are eliminated, and I'll also tell you why we have confusions. What is the reason? Why do students make so many mistakes when the concept itself is so easy? Okay, we are going to talk about that as well. So as of now. are you all with me have you all understood it <clears throat> yes okay so 
Yes. Yes. Cool. So A is supposed to convert his one hundred thousand dollars into Indian rupees. Where would he go to convert? Where should he? Whom should he approach? If he wants to convert these one hundred thousand dollars, which he has received, he has immediately received it. He sold the goods and money got credited in his account. Where should he go and convert it? <clears throat> so that person or that institution is called as dealer. It's called as dealer. One who deals, one who helps people, one who helps businesses to convert the currency and give them whatever they want. Called as dealer. Okay. Foreign exchange dealer. Most of the times it's the bank who is going to act like a dealer. So banks can be foreign exchange dealers. So A would approach a bank to convert $100,000. Now, let me tell you something very important because the sooner you realize these things, better it is. Although we know that A is supposed to convert his dollars into rupees, we are not going to use this word. Say I'm making your life easier. That's my job, right? As a trainer, it's my job to make your journey easier. So many a times people use the word convert, which is correct. There's nothing wrong in that word. But if you want to avoid mistakes in your calculations, if you want to enhance your understanding of the concepts, <clears throat> I suggest you use the words buy and sell. Lesson number one for today. And probably a very important lesson. If you falter over here, if you, <clears throat> if you make mistakes over here, then the entire, you know, if I look at risk management field or risk management topic for your syllabus as a castle, the entire castle will collapse. <clears throat> Foreign exchange risk management will not understand anything unless you apply this. Okay, many students, they fail to apply and there is a lot of chaos and confusion and, and some of the students try to mug up things. They mug up the formulas very mechanically. They try to solve it, which I do not really recommend. So first lesson and one of the most important lessons, use the term buy and sell when it comes to foreign exchange. I'm talking about academically practically you can use whatever you want you can say convert okay but when we solve our questions when we learn this topic use the word buy and sell so now going back to my story can you use buy and sell words to tell me what will a do with these one hundred thousand dollars what will a do he has received one hundred thousand dollars from b immediately today itself what will he do <clears throat> very good very good now now the interesting thing is all three of you who are participating very good elza fatima garima all three of you are looking at only one side of the story your answer is correct but it's only one sided so complete it. Complete it. Yes. Very good, Elza. Very good, Fatima. No, 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 no. Fatima, not that. Not that. You are partially right again, but conceptually completely wrong. Okay. But let's, we are, we are still learning. So no problem. So first of all, you need to understand that there are two parties here. A and bank a and bank all of you agree when the conversion happens there are two parties a and b a will buy something a will sell something 
same goes with bank bank will buy something bank will sell something so that's why i said there are two sides if you are selling something you should get something in return and that is inr if i sell usd i need to buy inr against it and bank will buy usd right this 100000 dollars will be purchased by bank from a and it will be sold to and and it will sell inr to a all of you agree agreed all of you <clears throat> okay now now pay attention all of you this this is you know i am slowly introducing you to the foreign exchange risk management okay treasury function and all it will take hardly 15 20 minutes to understand those concepts okay chapter number 12 even if i skip it it's okay i'm talking about chapter number 13 now chapter number 12 is just about you know theory the most boring part of our syllabus and also not much essential of course you should know the theory i'm going to talk about chapter number 12 but i am introducing you to the foreign exchange the core of risk management syllabus the core of the syllabus where maximum marks are there so now if i tell you okay now pay attention <clears throat> that elza you go to a shop okay i get an opportunity to show my artistic skills today <laughs> which you may not like okay so this is a shopkeeper this is a shopkeeper and elza approaches him and elza wants to buy a water bottle a simple water bottle okay so she approaches the shopkeeper what will i call the shopkeeper dealer dealer <clears throat> so elza approaches the dealer what will elza ask him she wants to buy water bottle but what will she ask him what would be her words very important this discussion will help you to sort out several issues in the risk management okay and i teach students right from the basics uh elza uh, may i buy this bottle okay you are too polite <laughs> of course you can buy and that's why he has his shop in place so that you can come and buy i i think your first question should be uh give me the bottle tell me the price okay how much is the what is the price of this bottle he, he has all the bottles on display by the way this lady bottles okay so elza says i want to buy this what is the price right agreed how much is it for so shopkeeper says uh this is my rate card okay this is the card it says one bottle equals to inr 20 i'll talk in terms of indian rupee you can apply to any currency right so one bottle is equal to rupees 20 elza ma'am this is the price you will have to pay me one bottle rupees 20 so now this particular thing one bottle is equal to 20 is called as quotation what is it called as quotation remember these words okay these terms are important so elza pays 20 bucks she pays 20 rupees to the shopkeeper and shopkeeper gives one bottle to elza okay now i know some of you might be wondering sir we know these things right so what are we learning here let's see have we really do we really know things that is what we are going to test now okay so now there are two parties here elza and the dealer now just tell me which of the statements are correct Elza has purchased one bottle against rupees twenty. This is the first statement. 
Elsa has purchased one bottle against rupees 20. The second statement is Elsa has sold rupees 20 against one bottle. Which of these two statements are correct? The first statement Elsa has purchased one bottle against rupees 20. And the second statement is Elsa has sold rupees 20. She has sold what? Rupees 20 against one bottle. Very good, Fatima. Cool. Elsa, okay. Mm, very unusual answer. <laughs> Garima? Garima, you also participate actively, okay? Because I'm sure you will get to learn something new. Although I believe you have studied this topic. But I'm going to deep. So this will be very important. Okay, Garima says first. Elza says second. And Fatima says both. Well, I would like to go with Fatima this time. Very good, Fatima. Both are correct. In fact, both are one and the same. And this is, this is what, no, even Elza, you did a good job. But, you know, that, that, that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to have new insights. Both statements are correct. In fact, they are one and the same. Starting point of all confusion. Confusion number one. Students feel, students think, and all of us, not only students, even you ask any layman, most people will say statement one. Most people, 90, 95% people, non-finance people, they will say statement one is correct. Come on, yaar, who, so, who sells 20 rupees? Do we sell money? Do we sell money? No. We pay money to buy goods, to buy commodities. We buy commodities and against that we pay money. We never say that we are selling money against one uh, against uh, the commodities. That is not what we say. However, the truth is both statements are correct. It means the same. Do you agree with me? So in a way, Elza has sold money. Money means rupee. And she has purchased bottle. Okay. Whereas a dealer has sold bottle and he has purchased, he has purchased what? He has purchased 20 rupees. Now I know it looks little odd, little awkward, but this is the truth. But however, okay, and bought the bottle. Yes, okay, makes sense. Yeah, okay. So now the truth is we never use the second statement. Although I'm saying both statements are accurate and both are correct. Just imagine Elsa uh, telling her mom that mom, I'm going out to sell 20 rupees against one bottle. Just imagine she telling this to her family and I'm just going out to the shop. Why Elsa? Why are you going out to the shop? Elsa says, uh, well, I want to sell my 20 rupees against one bottle. So what will her family say? Although what she, she's saying is technically correct. It's technically sound. She's selling 20 bucks against one bottle. But if she, if she says it, if she makes it as a quotation, if she says 20 rupees, I'm going and selling and one bottle I'm going and buying. If she says this, her family will say, now this is, yeah, FM has hit her now. She is too much into FM. I don't know what her teacher teaches her, but this is not the way. It, it's, it's affecting her now. We need to do something about this. Right? <laughs> Absolutely right. So, statement number two, even though it is correct, it is never quoted. So, what is the ideal way of quoting? The ideal way of quoting is one bottle is 20 rupees. Elza will never go to the shopkeeper and say, uh, sir, oh, I have few rupees with me. In that, in those rupees, how many drops of water can you give me? Or how many bottles of water can you give me? That is not how the conversation starts. 
the conversation the quotation always starts with one bottle so what is bottle what is the difference between bottle and rupee here bottle is the commodity make sense bottle is the commodity and what is rupee here bottle is equal to commodity okay and what is rupee here rupee here is money currency yes agreed na is there any doubt bottle is the commodity and money rupee 20 rupees note is money or you can call it currency so the conversation always starts the quotation always starts with one unit of the commodity is equal to how much money it never starts with one unit of money is equal to how many commodities although that also is correct technically both are correct but when we quote we say one unit of commodity is equal to how much rupees do you do you have you are you all with me are you all with me have you understood this i know it looks very basic and you know sometimes to some students it might look very absurd but let me guarantee you this is the way forward to understanding risk management in the easiest possible way all other methods are very fancy but this is the easiest way you can understand foreign exchange risk okay and you already know these things you just have to apply it to other assets you have to apply it to foreign currency you have to apply it to stocks any asset you have to apply these things and this is what students do not follow they think foreign exchange risk management is something out of the world the concepts are really out of the world no the concepts are same which are applicable to bottle and rupees one bottle 20 rupees the same concepts the same market concepts are applicable to bond markets stock markets uh, exchange markets forex markets same concepts and that is what i am trying to connect you with so one bottle is equal to 20 rupees that is the quotation now the trouble with foreign exchange market and that is the starting point of all confusions big confusions what do you see here what what is the major difference you see between one bottle is 20 rupees and one usd is equal to 74 rupees what is the major difference you see what is the major difference you see hello all of you focus on my question please one bottle is 20 rupees and one usd is equal to 74 rupees what is the major change that you see what is the major difference not change difference and that is the starting point very good fatima fatima has picked it up elza think about it again think about it again garima think about it what is the major difference if you are able to catch it the major difference is both are money here left side of the equation right side of the equation both are currencies whereas here one is commodity the other is currency which is easily understandable one bottle 20 rupees easily understandable one usd 74 rupees here where concepts go for a toss because this is money this also is money that means money is purchased and sold this is the starting point of all confusion that's why students they are completely messed up with their concepts okay what is the solution see the solution to some of the biggest problems of life okay let me be a little philosophical today <laughs> the problems okay so the solutions are generally very easy very very easy the simple solution is treat one of these two currencies like a commodity and stick to it and do your calculations you will get correct answers you will understand the concepts absolutely thoroughly so what is the secret treat one of the two commodities uh, sorry treat one of the two currencies like a commodity 
What do you mean by treating it like a commodity? What, what, what do you see when I say one bottle is equal to 20 rupees? What I see is you're telling me the price of the commodity. What is the value of one bottle? The value of one bottle is 20 rupees. So you're valuing an asset. You're valuing a commodity by using money as the scale. <clears throat> you're using money as the scale and you're pricing the commodity. Similarly, if you look at this quotation, one USD is 74 rupees. Don't you think I'm trying to treat USD like a commodity when I'm saying one USD is 74 rupees. So one USD, USD is acting like a bottle here, like a commodity. And the price of that commodity is 74 rupees. So by looking at the commodity, sorry, <clears throat> by looking at the quotation, let me repeat by merely looking at the quotation, we can see which of the currencies is being treated like a commodity. <clears throat> so any commodity, any currency against which one unit is expressed, that commodity, that currency is the commodity. Like I say, one USD is equal to 74 INR. So one unit is written against USD. That means I'm trying to treat USD like a bottle commodity. It's not acting. Like, it's not playing the role of money here. It's not money here. So far as the quotation is concerned, money job is done by INR. So look at USD as one bottle. So one bottle price is 74. <clears throat> Makes sense to you guys. Have you understood so far? Now we'll see how to apply it. Okay. Practically, when we start applying that time, you'll understand. Oh, okay. This is how, you know, it is saving me from mistakes. This is how it is giving me a clarity. <clears throat> okay. Absolutely clear. Okay. Now tell me one GBP. Now some of the currencies, okay. A quick, I, I, I'm sure you guys already know, but let me also say it. GBP, Great British Pound, this is for UK, USD uh, for US, INR you won't find in a ACC exams, at least I have never found INR being used anywhere, uh, but then you have Euro, EUR, Euro, also expressed as, you know, they have their own symbols as well, GBP is this, USD is this, Euro is this. Is belongs to the European Union. <clears throat> then we have uh, CHF. Are you aware of CHF? CHF. It's the Switzerland Swiss currency. Swiss franc. Swiss franc. CHF. Swiss francs. JPY. JPY. Japanese yen. These are the common currencies you may come across uh, in your exams <clears throat> and many, many imaginary currencies, imaginary countries, imaginary currencies, because it doesn't matter what currency we are talking about. The concepts remain the same. Not only currencies, you apply it for any asset from bottle to gold, to shares, to bonds, to currencies, to metals, whatever the underlying asset is, concepts are the same. Okay, <clears throat> now <clears throat> let me say one GBP is equal to 1.33 USD. So tell me in this quotation, what is the currency and what is the commodity? Very good. Commodity is GBP. One GBP is costing 1.33 USD. That is the logic. So any currency against which one has been prefixed, we can say that the price given is for that commodity. GBP is playing the role of a commodity. <clears throat> All of you agreed. All of you are understanding this. GBP is the commodity. USD is the currency. 
Okay. Now, Mr. A. <clears throat> So just some imaginary questions, imaginary case studies. Mr. A is in UK and sells goods to Mr. B in USA for, for dollars, I'll use that USD symbol, 100,000 to be received immediately to be received immediately <clears throat> the spot rate for gbp usd is or i should better write the spot rate for USD oblique GBP is equal to 1.3345 dash 1.3467. Calculate the amount of, so where is you, where is Mr. A situated in which country? He's in UK. He's in UK. What is his home currency? GBP. The pounds. Pound sterlings. They're also called as pound sterlings. So I, I can also say pound. I can also say sterlings. One and the same. So the home currency of A is sterlings. Home currency of B is dollars. But now you have to decide the perspective. From whose perspective are we trying to solve this question? We are trying to solve this question from Mr. A's perspective. So for Mr. A, what will be dollar foreign currency? Okay. So he's going to receive $100,000 immediately, but he can't do anything with it. So he'll have to convert it. He will have to sell those dollars and buy GBPs. So calculate the amount of GBPs, which he will receive upon conversion. Again, as I said, while writing, I may write conversion, but while thinking, you have to only think in terms of buying and selling. Okay. This is the first rule. Think in terms of buying, selling. Okay. So this is the question. <clears throat> all of you have understood the question. Please let me know. Have you all understood the question? Anyone? Clear? First, it is important to understand the question, what exactly it is asking. So, Mr. A is in UK, sells goods to B in US. Forget about B now. Perspective is A. So, A has sold goods to America and he's going to receive $100,000 immediately. Immediately is the important thing. I sell goods immediately, $100,000 coming to my picture. So, naturally, what is going to help me is the spot rate. Because I'm to convert it immediately. I'm going to convert it today in the moment. And the rate in the moment is 1.3345 and 1.3467. Now, what do you understand by this? Understanding the quotation is very important. When I say GBP, sorry, USD, oblique GBP, what does it mean? What is the meaning of oblique? Oblique means per. All of you know, right? Per, per unit divided by USD divided by GBP. So the meaning of this USD oblique GBP is amount of USD per unit of GBP. Correct? So now guys tell me, which is the commodity and which is the currency here? Which is the commodity and which is the currency? Tell me fast. When I say USD oblique GBP, which is the currency and which is the commodity? I've written no USD per unit of GBP. 
USD, number of USDs, number of dollars per unit of pounds. Very good. Elsa, I'm glad that you rectified yourself. GBP is the commodity. Very good, Fatima. Very good, Garima. GBP is the commodity. In this way, you have to, your first job. Now, guys, let me also tell you, none of these things are then in your Kaplan, BPP, etc. I, I don't want to say that, you know, it's a wrong approach or incorrect approach. No, it's very, very correct approach that they are following. But I believe it's more mechanical that they have given in the books. Whereas what I'm teaching you is more logical. It will stay beyond your classes. You know, once you clear FM, AFM, still you'll remember these things because this is the logic. Okay. So I don't recommend you to read FM and BPP or any publisher for risk management. Because they have given you some mechanical things which ultimately fail when advanced questions come up. That's why people find AFM very complicated because they have learned things very mechanically. Those students who learn risk management very mechanically, they are bound to fail. They are bound to fail. Or, or they, they, they are bound to score very less marks in FM, AFM, especially in AFM. They might not score less marks or they might pass FM because the <clears throat> syllabus coverage is quite less for risk management. But later on in AFM, life is hell for them. They do not pass AF because they have studied everything mechanically. So what I'm teaching you is very important because this is the logic I'm trying to develop. So be very attentive and very serious about these things. So when I write USD oblique GBP, I'm saying what I'm trying to say is how many number of units of USD can be exchanged against one unit of GBP. So basically I'm trying to write one GBP 1 GBP is equal to how many USDs? That is what I'm trying to write. So 1 GBP is the commodity. Correct? All of you agree? Now, the second thing you need to notice is there are two rates that have been given to you. Can you all see that? One is 1.3345 and 1.3467. All of you, can you, can you notice? Did you all notice that? That I have given you two rates. I've given you two rates. Now, let me ask you. Yes, it confused me. Okay. No confusion. Everything is so easy. Don't worry. Come back to the bottle example. Come back to the bottle example. So, Elsa, when you approached the shopkeeper for purchasing one bottle, you asked him, what is the price? I want to buy this bottle. What is the price? So he told you, he quoted the price to you as 20 rupees. Now think from the dealer's perspective. This is a very important statement I said just now. Think from dealer's perspective. Always think from dealer's perspective while deciding the rates. Think from his perspective. Has he purchased these bottles at 20 rupees? He must have also purchased it no, from the wholesaler, from the, from the manufacturer, wholesaler, from some source, he must have purchased these bottles. So the dealer is the buyer as well as seller. Yes, he's selling bottle to Elsa right now, but he must have also sourced it from somewhere. No, he must have also purchased it from some wholesaler or some manufacturer. So in this transaction, he was a buyer. Do you all agree? He has purchased bottles from the wholesaler and now he is selling it to Elsa. So dealers are both buyers as well as sellers. We look at him as a seller mainly because we are thinking from our perspective. From Elsa's perspective, who is this guy who is on, in, the, in the shop who is selling bottles? He's a seller. But actually, if you see the whole picture, he is a buyer as well as seller. He's purchasing the bottles from a wholesaler and he's selling it to Elsa. Would he have purchased these bottles at 20 rupees? Common sense. Would he have purchased it at 20 rupees? No, because he's a dealer. No, a dealer always has to make some gain. 
He's a businessman. He wants to make profit. All of you are understanding this. So, from the dealer's perspective, the buy price has to be lower. And the sell price has to be higher. Did I say anything unusual, anything new that you never were aware of? Nope. All of us are. But students do not apply this logic in risk management. And then the risk management becomes very difficult. The simple logic. Never think from... I'm talking about only for determining rates. Okay. Don't use this as a general rule for everything. I'm saying only for determining the rates, determining the rates, what rate is to be used for that commodity to decide, to determine that you have to use this logic. Never think from Elza's perspective, customer's perspective, always think from dealer's perspective, broader picture, because a dealer is buying that commodity at a lower price and he's selling the commodity at a higher price. Simple. So buy price is always less than the sell price. Now, look at this quotation and tell me which is the lower price and which is the higher price. Very good. The left side is the lower price. Right side is the higher price. And it will always be like this. Quotations are always like this. Left side is lower. Right side is higher. All of you get it? All of you are understanding this. So naturally, one price. See, one thing we immediately understood that every commodity in this world has two prices. Every commodity. Even the laptop that you are using right now, the phone that you are using right now has two prices. One of those prices belongs to you. It was applied to you. But the person who sold that mobile phone to you must have purchased it at another price. So there are always two prices for buy and for sell. They will buy at one price, sell it to you at another price. So every commodity in this world has two prices. So will the foreign exchange. So foreign exchange also has two prices. One, the left side price, the buy price. And the second one is the sell price. Now, when I'm saying buy and sell, whose perspective I'm using? Whose perspective is 1.334 the buy price and 1.3467 the sell price? The dealer's perspective, the forex dealer, which is the bank. I can also call it the bank. Banks do the job of foreign exchange dealings. So think from not A's perspective, but from dealer's perspective. And tell me, what is the price at which the dealer is ready to buy and the dealer is ready to sell? So what is the buy price for the dealer and what is the sell price for the dealer? So buy price is 1.3345. Very good, Fatima. Okay. But tell me, Whose buy price are you talking about? Like in this case, we're talking about bottle. Okay. In this case, whose buy price are you going to, are you talking about? So this 1.3345 is the price of what? Is the price of what? I'm not asking for whom. I'm saying of what? 1.3345 is the price, no? Price of what? Okay. Huh. Fatima, I'm so happy. I was really, I had lost my, you know, I had missed my heartbeat for some time when you said USD. Can you see how easy it is to make mistakes? Garima, can you see how easy it is to make mistakes? Even you say, say dollar. Garima also says dollar. Is dollar the commodity? Simple thing, but we make a lot of mistakes. Is dollar the commodity? Who is the commodity whose price is being talked about? GBP. Okay. GBP. 
Garima, are you understanding this? So this 1.3345 is the price of 1 GBP. But it's the buy price for the dealer. That means dealer is ready to buy 1 GBP at 1.3345. Okay, so I'll write it in the notes. The dealer, think always from the dealer's perspective. Okay, so important notes. And these notes, you stick to only these notes, only these two steps. Don't think about anything else while determining the rates. Only these two things. First, identify the commodity. First job is to identify the commodity. Second job, identify what will dealer do with that commodity. That means he can do any, either of the two things. No, he can either buy or sell. There is no third thing that we can do. You can either buy that commodity or you can sell that commodity. If you're in the market, it's that easy. Only these two steps have to be followed. And I'm really not sure. And it's like a mystery for me. One of the many mysteries that are there in this world. One of the commonest mystery for me personally is why do students don't apply this. It's so easy. It's cakewalk. Absolutely. Like in this case, bottle is the commodity. So if this shopkeeper has to give a quotation to Elsa, how will he give a quotation? He will say rupees oblique bottle is equal to 15 dash 20. You should easily understand this quotation. Rupees oblique bottle is 15 dash 20. What does it mean? That the shopkeeper, the dealer buys the bottles for 15. So, you know, many a times people can come and sell their bottles. Also, some wholesalers can come for business. So the shopkeeper is clear that I will buy at 15, not more than that. And I will sell at 20. He's clear about his rates. His buy rate and the sell rate. So when he says rupees oblique bottle, that means how many rupees per bottle is the price. So bottle is the commodity. So this 15 and 20 is the price of the bottle. No, it's not the price of the rupee. Garima, is it clear? Samajme aray sabko. Can we take a break? I think Fatima also has to take a quick break. We'll take a break guys around five minutes, five to seven minutes. Okay. Because I, I want everyone at your desk. So we'll take a break. Okay guys. Okay. We'll see you at, uh, it's 10, 10 in my clock. So around 10, 15, 10, 16, we'll resume. Okay. And be focused after that. Once you come back, be focused. Okay.
Okay, guys, can we resume? <clears throat> yep, okay. All right. So if this dealer, if this dealer wants to give a quotation for his bottle, he doesn't know whether Elsa has come to buy bottles from him or is she a wholesaler? He is not aware. So he will give her, her a complete quotation. How will the quotation look like? Exactly like this, right? It will look like this. Rupees per bottle, 15 hyphen 20. He has given her two rates. So she can choose, not choose. She can, she can, she knows who she is, right? Is she a wholesaler or is she, uh, had she come to buy bottles from him or has he come to sell bottles to him? She's aware. Both of them are aware now. So accordingly, the relevant rate will be used. So when he says rupees per bottle, 1520, it means that the dealer is ready to buy the commodity is ready to buy the commodity from the world at large at 15 rupees. Whoever wants to come and sell should be willing to sell it to him for 15. But I'm not talking from the world at large perspective. I'm talking from dealer's perspective because if, you're, if your perspectives are changing again and again, again, it will lead to chaos. It will lead to confusion. So stick to these steps. Identify what will dealer do with that commodity. First, identify the commodity. Second, what will dealer do? Not the other party. What will dealer do with that commodity? So what will the dealer do with the bottle? If Elza has come to purchase the bottle from him, what will the dealer do? What is the dealer going to do? Dealer is going to sell. That means the relevant rate, the applicable rate is not 15 in this case. The applicable rate is 20 sell rate will be applicable because the dealer is selling the bottle in this case. Guys, have you understood this? My very sincere and humble request, stick to this. Stick to this logic. Now, if you go to some other teacher and if you want to learn foreign exchange management from, from that teacher, that teacher might give you some other technique. There are different techniques different ways to learn the same thing. My very humble advice, stick to one. And it's my view that this is quite an easy technique. I've been teaching it for many years now. And students have told me that once they understand the logic, it's very easy. There are some mechanical ways of learning, which I believe are absolutely absurd. Let me tell it to you openly. Like if the dealer is selling, uh, you know, sell 15 by 20, that kind of, you know, if this comes, go for 20. If that comes, go for 15. This is the kind of logic. Sometimes some people teach. I don't belong to that school. I believe in giving the logic. Okay. Because the reason is I'm not against shortcuts. I very much support shortcuts, but sometimes shortcuts will uh, take you to hell. Okay. Sometimes shortcuts can take you to hell, especially in AFM. Many questions, almost all questions in AFM can be solved only if your logic is sound. No shortcut will help you. So you can pass FM using shortcuts, but then you are stuck. Who is going to spend time again to teach you the basics in AFM? Right? So these are the basics, the basic logic. Now, coming back to my question. I, I hope you have understood things enough. Now we can jump to the advanced stuff. So now tell me, what is the commodity in this question? Answer these two steps, okay? We'll go with these two steps. So identify the commodity. So tell me, who is the commodity here? Garima, Fatima, Elza, who is the commodity? <clears throat> GBP. Fantastic. Very good. Step one, correct. 
स्टेप वन करेक्ट फातिमा स्टेप वन करेक्ट स्टेप टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट विल डीलर डू विथ दैट कमोडिटी is the dealer going to whenever the conversion will take place whenever mr a and dealer whenever the bank and mr a whenever they will meet for conversion converting what these 100000 dollars whenever they will meet to convert these 100000 dollars what will be the dealer doing now the tendency of the students now look at the traps some of the traps the tendency of the student is think from this 100000 dollars perspective 99% students do that they will say okay uh, a is going to sell these 100000 dollars to the bank to buy no that is not the approach once you decide the commodity you have to stick to the commodity forget about these 100 dollars 100000 dollars stick to the commodity so what will the bank do when mr a comes for converting his 100000 dollars what will bank do with gbp hello with gbp not with 100000 dollars not with usd with gbp bank is going to sell brilliant i am glad let me again tell you there are alternative approaches if you go to some other teacher there will be some other logic all logics are correct but stick to one the secret is stick to one otherwise let me guarantee you you will completely mess up everything and your mind will be completely chaotic this topic has a huge tendency of creating confusions hence stick to one thing and these are the only two steps i am giving you there is no third step why do you want to make your life complex when things are so easy so you have to identify the commodity done and just check what the dealer will do so tell me if the dealer is going to sell the commodity will he use the higher price or the lower price he is there to do business he is there to make profits so will he sell at a lower price or will he sell at a higher price naturally always the right side price the higher one always the higher price very good so the applicable rate the reason we are discussing all this is to identify the applicable rate so the applicable rate will be 1.3467 we have to ignore the left side rate and pick only the right side rate that is the rate of 1 gbp applicable for this conversion so 1 gbp is 1.3467 dollars so what will be the gbps for 100000 dollars cross multiply one gbp equal to 1.3467 that is what we have identified what usd so how much will be 100000 usd is equal to how many gbps that is called as exchange rate so 1 gbp is 1.3467 so 100000 usds if you are exchanging how much will the bank give you the bank will give you 100000 multiplied by 1 of course and divided by 1.3467 so 74256 gbp that is my final answer calculate the amount of gbp which he will receive upon conversion so he will receive 74256 gbps elza ha very good little bit of scolding is required no sometimes not multiplication division yes simple maths fifth standard maths cross multiply garima are you there have you understood this yes very good fatima very good 74 to 55 
That's your answer. Now let me test whether you have really understood it. What other two countries would you like to visit? Mr. A is in Germany. And now this time buys goods from Japan. Okay. For naturally the transaction has to be for in foreign currency. If the transaction is not then in foreign, foreign currency, then there is no point in, there is no conversion there. Right. So A is in Germany and my question will be from A's perspective. For A, Japanese currency would be the foreign currency. So A is in Germany and buys goods from Japan for JPY 200,000 to be paid immediately. So foreign currency fluctuations will not affect it because the, all the settlements are happening immediately. You know? We are not, we have not yet gone into risk management. Risk management is the next step. We are still first understanding the maths behind Forex. Okay. So Mr. A is in Germany and buys goods from J Japan for JPY 200,000, uh, 200,000 to be paid immediately. Okay. The spot rate, the spot, uh, 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 Euro, the spot, spot means right now in, in at present Euro oblique JPY is equal. I'm just taking imaginary rates. Okay. I'm just taking imaginary rates, nothing to do with reality uh, is let me say 0 0.4567 dash 0 0.4789. So one thing you must realize the left rate is always lower than the right rate. 15 rupees always lower than 20 rupees. Buying always happens at a lower price. Selling happens at the higher price. Business logic, simple. Okay. Although the spread is not too wide, unlike bottles in bottles, the spread was five rupees, but here the spread is very narrow, but there will be a spread. There will be a difference and left will always be less than the right. Right will always be greater than the left. No matter what, please remember this rule of quotations. Calculate the amount of euros which Mr. A will have to pay to now see what is happening. I'm in Germany and I have purchased goods from Japan. The price is 200,000 JPY. Naturally, I have to make a payment in JPY, but do I have JPY in my pocket? I'm in Germany. Do I have JPY in my pocket? Do I have JPY in my pocket? No. Then what do I have? I have euros. I'm in Germany. So I have euros. So I will have to convert these euros into JPY. Now, you know what is buying and selling. So you can tell me, I will have to convert these euros into JPY. That means I will have to sell my euros and buy JPY and make that payment. I will have to buy 200,000 JPY from the dealer by giving away my euros. That is the conversion. So once I buy JPY 200,000, I can make the payment. So how many euros I will have to pay to the de dealer to acquire these 200,000 JPY? To purchase these 200,000 JPY, how many euros I will have to pay? That is the question. So calculate the amount of euros which Mr. A will have to pay to the dealer to acquire J P Y. Your time starts now. Two steps. Don't go into wild, wild thinking. Okay. Many students have that habit. They think a lot as if it's something very difficult. I have made your life very easy. You can identify the rates. See, the main thing in the, in these questions is identifying the correct rate. Rest everything is easy. Identifying left rate or the right rate, buy rate or the sell rate. Identifying that is everything. For that, you have to use only these two steps. That's it. Don't think beyond that. So, 
Your time starts now. So one more thing you can do in your scratch pad, even during your exams or while you are learning the concept. Okay. You can draw a small diagram like this. Like in this case, who are the two parties? A and bank, the dealer. A sell. Now, first thing you have to identify the commodity that is a no negotiable that you have to do. Okay. So JPY is the commodity. All of you agree. All of you agree. Oh, come on, Elsa. Please. Have you not understood? Please let me know, Elsa. What's wrong? <laughs> okay. When I say Euro oblique JPY, Elsa, what do you think this is? Just, just say it out. Euro oblique JPY. What does that mean? X oblique Y. What does that mean? Oblique stands for per, per unit. So what is Euro oblique JPY? Amount of Euro. Yes, Fatima, correct. Fatima, what's wrong? Come on guys, wake up. One JPY per Euro. What does that mean, Fatima? One JPY per euro is it? Does that have any meaning? Always go back to the bottle example. Do not think, you no, know, it's very easy, guys. Bottle example. How did I write it? One bottle is equal to 20 rupees. So, bottle, uh, sorry, rupees, oblique bottle. So, number of rupees per unit of bottle, 20. Simple. So when I say euros oblique JPY, it means number of euros per unit of JPY. So who is acting like a bottle in this case? JPY is acting like a bottle, no? So one JPY is equal to how many euros? That is what it means. One JPY is equal to how many euros? Garima, are you there? Are you understanding it? Elsa? Per unit JPY. Okay. Very good, Elza. Garima says yes. So as I said no earlier, this is a mystery for me. And this is not only for you, with you guys, okay. In every batch, in every so many hundreds of FM batches that I've taken so far, everywhere, in every batch, students are confused. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's a mystery for me. When I have made it so simple. Whenever they say Euro oblique JPY, go back to the bottle example. Just like bottle is the commodity, rupees is the currency. Similarly, Euro oblique JPY, what does it mean? Per unit of JPY. So JPY is acting like a bottle, no? Per unit of something. So that something is the commodity. So 0.4567 euros is the buy price for one JPY and 0.4789 euros is the sell price for JPY from dealer's perspective. If you look at JPY like a commodity, that dealer is selling JPY and also buying JPY. He is ready to buy JPY at 0.4567 euros and he is ready to sell JPY at 0.4789 euros. He wants higher price for the sale and he wants to pay lower price for the purchase. 
purchase of what? The commodity, the JPY. Now, does it make sense? Yes, INR oblique bottle is 1520 is the reference. Very good, Fatima. That's the correct way. It's the reference. Always go back to the reference. INR oblique bottle means number of Indian rupees per unit of bottle. So bottle is the commodity. Okay. Now, sometimes they give you the quotation in a different way. They will, they will clearly say per unit of JPY is equal to instead of writing Euro oblique JPY, they will write one unit of JPY is equal to 0 0.4567, 0 0.478 times. That, that time it is very clear that JPY is the commodity. But when it comes to Euro oblique JPY, students become confused. What is the commodity here? The commodity is always the thing that is on the right side of the slash per unit of JPY. The right side is the commodity. And these are the currencies. The other one, the Euro. So 0 0.467 Euros and 0 0.4789 euros. Now, is it clear guys? Is the first step clear? Identification of the commodity. Clear now. Very good. Okay. So what I do is you can also draw this diagram. A sells, sells what? A is selling what to the bank? What will A sell to the bank? Now, you have to first identify the commodity. The, the first thing you have to always identify the commodity and then see what A and bank both are doing with that commodity. Simple. And then we'll narrow down to bank. So what is A going to do with JPY? Is he going to buy JPY or sell JPY? Is he going to buy JPY from the bank or is he going to sell JPY to the bank? buy. A will buy. Fantastic. Okay. So A will buy JPY. Arrow should be like this. Okay. And bank will, since A is buying JPY, bank is selling JPY. Why are we talking about JPY? because JPY is the commodity. Now you have to stick to the bank. Now you have to forget about A and stick to the bank and see what the bank is doing with the JPY. That's step number two. Step number two, identify what will the dealer do with the commodity, not A, not A, forget about it. Identify what bank will do. So bank is going to sell JPY. So naturally what rate will the bank use for selling the JPY? Which rate will the bank use? Which rate will the bank use? Lower rate or higher rate? The higher rate, of course. 4.4789. So 0 0.4789 is the rate for one JPY. So tell me what will be the rate for 200,000 JPY? If one JPY is 0.4789 euros, so 200,000 JPY is equal to how many euros? Are we going to multiply or divide? Are we going to multiply or divide? We are going to Are we supposed to multiply or are we supposed to divide? Multiply? Elsa. What happened, Elsa? One JPY. You can you can write it, okay? If you get confused, then you should write in this in the scratch pad. One JPY is equal to Euros one uh, point four seven eight nine. Point four seven eight nine. So two hundred thousand JPY. Haven't haven't we all studied this in school? At some standard, some grade, we have studied this, right? Basic arithmetic, which is called as cross multiplication. So one JPY is point four seven eight nine. Two hundred thousand JPY is how much? So don't you think we are supposed to multiply these two and divide by one? So ignore divide because it is divide by one. 
So you have to suppose to multiply, no, two hundred thousand multiplied by point four seven eight nine. Fatima, you also divided. You also divided, no? Fatima also divided. She got four hundred and seventy. So, guys, these mistakes are not allowed because these are unpardonable mistakes. Not from my end. I'm talking from the exam perspective. Of course, even for me, it is unpardonable. You can't mis make mistakes with two plus two. Yeah, you are studying FM. You are studying. You are you are about to become chartered accountants. You are about to become ACCAs in next two three years or maybe next one year. How can you make mistakes with fifth grade mathematics? Not allowed. Not at all allowed. Okay, rectified. Very good, Elsa, Fatima, Garima. Garima also has multiplied. So the correct answer is. Amount of euros will be two hundred thousand multiplied by point four seven eight nine ninety five thousand seven eighty euros will have to be paid by A to the bank to acquire two hundred thousand JPYs so that those JPYs can be paid. Cool. Can we can we move ahead, or should I test? One well, last test, final test. And if you don't pass this test, then risk management is not for you. Okay, let me be very strict now. Then I'll stop teaching you risk management. You can study on your own. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yes, but. Although I'm kidding, but please take it serious. Okay, no, I don't want wrong because guys, this is A B C D. If you are, if you are, if you're not going beyond A B C D, what can I teach you? How can I teach you grammar? How, how can I teach you poetry? How can I teach you writing an essay when your your A B C D is not clear? You don't know A to Z. You don't know the alphabets. How can I teach you? You understand my problem? Okay, so which country now would you like to go? So Elsa is in France. Okay, Elsa wants to be in France and sells goods to Fatima. In Fatima wanted to be in Switzerland, right? Uh, okay, chalega because Switzerland has got its own currency. Switzerland. Okay. For now, what should be the currency? The question will be from Elsa's perspective. Elsa, is the spelling correct? I hope the spelling is correct, and I'm sorry if it is not. Elsa, yes, I can see in the chat E L Z A. Correct. All right. So Elsa is in France and sells goods to Fatima in Switzerland. For what currency? Can you guess? If your concepts are good, you should be able to tell me what currency. France has got its own currency, euro. Switzerland also has its own currency, and also euro. But I'm not going to talk about euro now for Switzerland because Switzerland has got its own currency as well. Both are allowed. So if you're traveling in Switzerland, you can keep euros in one pocket and you can keep Swiss francs in another pocket. So Elsa has a currency called FF Fra French francs. French francs, not French fries, huh? French francs. Okay, Elsa is in France. Her currency is French francs. Sells goods to Fatima in Switzerland. Switzerland currency is CHF. Okay, I'll not bring euro into picture now. Both countries have got their own respective currencies. For naturally, if I'm asking the question from Elsa's perspective, the foreign currency is CHF. So for C H F five hundred thousand to be received immediately. Okay, because Elsa is selling goods, so she is going to receive money. 
how much money she's going to receive? CHF 500,000. Now, the spot, the spot uh, FF oblique CHF. Okay, it can be anything. It can be CHF oblique FF also. Doesn't matter. Okay, so spot FF oblique CHF is equal to 0 0.8956 dash 0 0.9010 just imaginary rates calculate the amount of ff which elza will ultimately receive upon conversion okay this is your test my dear students I'll be a little strict with this test. I don't want any mistakes. We have we are spending, you, you, you're seeing, right? I'm spending so much time on these basics. I think by now we should have moved on to risk management. So be a little fast now, okay? You have to be a little serious about these things. We are lagging behind a little bit in time, but that's okay. I want you guys to understand and then only you have to move ahead. So tell me, Step, go by steps, step A, step B. Who will give me the fastest answer? You can put the answer in the chat. Fatima. Fatima, are you pulling my leg? I'm getting a feel that you're pulling my leg now. I hope you're not joking with me. I'm expecting better things, Fatima, please. Hmm. Correct, Elza. Fatima, what is the commodity? Garima, what is the commodity? Okay, Garima has given me the final answer. Great. Uh, I'll solve and get back. Sure. But tell me the steps also. Please, also tell me the steps. Steps are an essential part of the answer. The first step is identify the commodity. So the commodity here is dash. CHF. Very good, Garima. Elza, very good. CHF is the commodity. FF cannot be the commodity, right? Number of FFs per unit of CHF. Per unit of CHF means CHF is the commodity. Simple. That is the first step. Fatima, is it clear? Fatima, why did you say FF? I, I mean, was it by mistake? Was it by just... Or do you genuinely feel FF? I don't think so. I don't think so. You genuinely think FF. Why did you write FF then? What? Was it just a... I hope you know that it is CHF. I hope you have understood the logic. Otherwise, last one hour, two, one, one, two hours that we have spent will be waste. Fatima. Currency confusion. Okay. That's, that's okay. If it was a confusion or if it was just a sloppy thing, then that's okay. That's forgivable. But if you genuinely think, after all this discussion, if you genuinely think it is FF, then that's a trouble for me. I hope all of you have understood that it's CHF. Cool. You cannot afford to make mistake with that everything else will be wrong. Your entire question, your case study in AFM, everything will go for a toss. If we make a mistake here, it's that important. So what will bank do with CHF? Elza and bank, two parties, they are going to exchange, they are going to convert 500,000 CHF, 
CHF itself is the commodity. Elsa wants to buy, sorry, Elsa is going to receive CHF from Fatima. So Elsa is going to receive. What is she she's going to do with this CHF? She is going to go and sell. And CHF itself is a commodity. That's why I'm talking from CHF's perspective. Elsa is going to sell CHF. So what will bank do? If Elsa is selling the CHF, what will bank do? Bank will buy, no? Bank will buy. Oh, oh. Elsa. Bank will buy or bank will sell CHF. Okay. <laughs> Elsa, what's wrong? I'm really surprised actually. I was expecting both of you will pick it up within a minute. What's wrong? I'm really, now this is a bigger mystery now. Okay, anyways, don't feel bad. It happens. Always draw a diagram. Simple tip, Elsa and bank. Focus is CHF, only and only CHF. Forget about the other currency, forget about Euro. Okay, For, forget about Swiss franc. Focus on CHF, why CHF? Because it is the commodity. So here Fatima, she is in Switzerland. She has paid 500,000 CHF to Elsa. So Elsa, you have 500,000 CHF in your pocket, which are useless. Why useless? Because you are in, you are in France. If you are in France, no matter how many CHFs you have in your pocket, they are useless. You will have to go to the bank and first, am I talking about the com commodity? Yes, both are same. So Elsa will sell CHF to the bank. Bank will buy CHF from Elsa. Yes or no? And against that, bank is going to sell FFs, French francs. But we are not going to talk about French francs. Focus is on CHF. So bank is going to buy CHFs from Elsa by selling French francs to her. Focus on CHF. So bank is going to ultimately buy CHF, buy the commodity. First, identify the commodity and then see what the bank does with the commodity. So bank is going to buy the commodity. Okay, correct. All of you agree? Elsa? Is it difficult? Let me ask all of you. Is it di something difficult that I'm teaching you? Is it difficult? Can I call it difficult in any way? It's so easy, straightforward, straightforward things. And two steps. We have two steps. Stick to them. Stick to those two steps. Now, the reason I'm not teaching this to you mechanically, there are some mechanically easier ways to learn this, but I'm not, I will not teach you that. You can go and learn yourself because I know later on it will be a big problem in AFM. So I'm teaching you things not mechanically, but logically. Tell me one final time, guys, this was your test, but I believe I'm solving it. So the commodity is CHF and bank is going to buy CHF from Elsa. Okay. Fatima says, uh, but there is a small confusion with Mr. A's quest. There is a small confusion between this question and the earlier one. Can you please compare and explain for clarity? Sure. Elsa says, Elsa is selling so higher price. Elsa is selling. Elsa is selling. But should you focus on Elsa or should you focus on bank? Look at the steps. Look at the steps. Why, why are you guys getting so confused? The steps are so clear. Identify the commodity and identify what dealer will do to the commodity. 
So we'll not focus on what Elsa is doing. We'll focus on what bank is doing. So what is bank doing? What is bank doing? What is bank doing with the commodity? Buying. Buying. So will bank buy at a lower rate or a higher rate? Bank is buying. So will bank buy? Will the dealer of the bottle buy the bottle at 15 rupees or 20 rupees? He will buy it at 15, no? He will sell at 20, but he will buy at 15. Always the lower price. So 0.8956 is the price that will be applicable. Okay. So convert 500,000 CHF. Convert 500,000 CHF into FF by applying the left side rate, the buy rate, 0.8956. And tell me the answer. So one CHF is 0.8956 FF. So 500,000 CHF will be how many FFs? Multiplied by or divide? Multiply or divide? Tell me that first. Multiply. Very good. Fatima, multiply. Very good. Very good. Okay. Now, Fatima wants me to compare these two questions, right? This one, Germany one. Or do you want me to compare all? Let's compare all. Okay. Everything is consistent. So, as I said, only two questions you need to ask, no matter what the question is. If you want to pick up the right rates, you have to ask yourself two questions. First, identify the commodity. It's the GBP. Correct? Why GBP? Look at the quotation. I'll always ask you to look at the quotation and see. It's a visual thing. The moment you see, you'll understand who is the commodity. So, GBP is the commodity. Everyone clear in question number one? Okay. Now, you have to see what the bank, the dealer will do with the GBP. So for that, you have to look at the transaction carefully. So Mr. A, what has happened to Mr. A? Has he received or is he supposed to, re has he received Forex or has he paid Forex? In question number one, Forex is dollars. So has he received dollars or has he paid dollars? Has he received dollars or has he paid dollars? I'm talking about dollars, okay? Not GBP. Has he received dollars or has he paid dollars? He has received. Mr. A, Mr. A, yes. I'm talking about Mr. A. So has Mr. A received dollars or has he paid dollars? He has received dollars, okay? Where is he situated? Where is Mr. A situated? Which country? UK. Okay. So he cannot do anything with these dollars. So what will he have to do? He will have to sell these dollars. He will have to sell these dollars and buy what? Sell dollars and buy what? We can also draw one more diagram by incorporating both the currencies. So A and bank. So what will A do? A will, A has received $100,000. So he'll go to a bank and what will he do? He will sell dollars and buy against that. He will buy GB. Correct. Simple. In this way, you can write and you can have a clarity. He will sell the dollars which he has received and he will buy GB. He will buy GBP and he will sell dollars. What will bank do? Bank will buy dollars from A. Okay. Bank will buy dollars from A and bank will sell GB. Okay. Any doubt in this? Will you be able to understand this diagram? 
I've just written down, I've just expressed the transaction, the exchange that is happening between A and bank. Have you understood this? You can also draw it for any question. Till the time you are clear about concepts, you can draw the diagram. Later on, you won't need it. Gradually, you won't need the diagram. So have you understood this? Now, GBP dollar, GBP dollar. Out of GBP and dollar, who is the commodity? Who is the commodity? Between GBP and dollar, which is the commodity? GBP. Correct. GBP. Okay. I'll mark it in yellow. Forget about this. Hmm? Now, you have identified the commodity and now you have marked, you are focusing only on what is happening with the commodity. Now you have to focus on what the dealer is doing with the commodity. So now your focus should be bank, always the bank and completely ignore what A is doing. So this side is to be ignored. Now I want only this one thing. So what is bank doing with GBP? Bank is selling the GBP. Correct? Correct? Have you, are you learning the process? Are you learning the steps? So since bank is selling the GBP, we have used the sell rate 1.3467. Left side is the buy rate, right side is the sell rate. And since we have identified bank is selling the GBP, that is the commodity, we have identified 1.3467 and then we have converted it by using this cross multiplication. Guys, are you, have you understood now? Second one, second one, draw a diagram in your books for this Germany, Japan, draw a diagram. You have to draw A and bank. A bank. Okay. And, and then draw these two lines like this from A to bank, bank to A, and then again, two lines for both the currencies. Okay. So which are the two currencies here? The two currencies are JPY Euro. Okay. So Euro, JPY, Euro, JPY. What is the story? The story is A is in Germany and buys goods from Japan. And the price of those goods is 200,000 JPY, which he doesn't have because he's in Germany. No, if he's in Germany, he has to make a payment in JPY. So he will have to buy JPY. Okay. Mr. A will buy JPY by selling euros from his pocket, paying the euros, buying JPY clear. Similarly, bank will buy euros, will buy euros from A and only then pay him the JPY that he needs 200,000. So bank will sell JPY and buy euros. Is this diagram clear? Is this diagram clear? Are you all also drawing it in your book? Who is the commodity? Who is the commodity? JPY. So J P Y. Let us mark it in yellow. All the JPYs mark in yellow. And ignore the euros now. Focus only on the yellow. Now, second step, you have to focus on A or do you have to focus on B, on, on bank? Focus on A or focus on bank? Focus on bank. So yellow. So if you're, if you're focusing on bank, you should ignore A. You should ignore everything about A. So the only thing remains are these two. So bank is going to sell JPY. Clear? bank is going to sell the JPY. So pick up the sell rate. Sell rate is always the higher rate. 
0.4789. So we picked up 0.4789 and we converted it, multiplied it, and we got our answer. So 95,780 euros will have to be paid by A to acquire 200,000 JPY. Clear? Has it improved your clarity? Has it improved your, has your clarity improved with understanding? Much better. Can you draw a diagram for this Elza Fatima? Elza Fatima question. Draw the diagram yourself and let me know what rate should I pick up? So you have to draw a diagram Elza and bank. Don't draw Elza and Fatima. Okay, the question is from Elza's perspective and she's going to convert it with the bank. So Elza and bank are the two parties in the conversion. Bank is always a party. Yo. Okay, Garima says 0.8956. Cool. Garima, I, I want the steps. Please tell me the steps. Did you dot, draw the diagram? Did you mark things that we are supposed to focus? Yes, very good. Cool. So we have Elsa and we have bank. Commodity is CHF. Elsa and Fatima, did you both draw the diagram? Did you? It's bank buys CHF. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Very good. So is the diagram style helping you? Is the diagram method helping you? Okay. Cool. Ooh. My God, we spent so much time. All right. One home assignment. And then we'll stop for today. Okay. I'll give you a home assignment. But guys, can you do a small favor on me as well as yourself? Especially on yourself. Okay. I want you guys from the, from the slides. You have the slides, right? I've shared these slides with you. I have, you have these slides, right? Please go through these slides. Don't, I'm not saying study text. I'm saying the slides, chapter number 12. There are very few pages. That's it. I think around seven to eight pages only. Very easy concepts. Like what are financial markets? What are capital markets? Primary markets, secondary markets, all, you know, become and graduate level stuff. Nothing substantial, nothing where we need to spend time together. Although if you have any doubts, we are definitely, you know, if you have doubt, we are definitely going to deal with it. Especially I'm going to talk about uh, unit seven in chapter 12, role of treasury function, two pages that we are going to anyways discuss. Okay. What is the role of treasury function and international treasury functions, centralized treasury management. We are going to discuss that in tomorrow's session. But before that, whatever you have, money market instruments, financial institutions, stock market basics, what happens in the stock market? What are capital markets? What are money markets? Role of financial markets? I think this is 
BCom level stuff. Could you read it? Can you take it as a home assignment? Just reading it. Just reading it. Sure. Garima. I'm giving you this as a home assignment because you can do it. It's nothing. There's nothing great about that topic. You read it once and I'm hundred percent sure you'll understand yet. If there are certain things you want to discuss, then we will. And the last point within chapter 12, point number seven, the role of treasury function. This is, I'm, this is what I'm going to discuss. Okay. Because this is some advanced stuff. This is purely FM stuff, ACCA stuff. Okay. So we are going to discuss it. So what did I discuss with you today? Then I was discussing stuff with you from chapter 13 Forex. Okay. Slowly, I'm going to introduce you with more concepts, especially the parity concepts, triple P and IPP, triple PT, IPPT, purchasing power parity theory, interest rate parity theory, very interesting theories. We are going to discuss it in detail, but what we were discussing today were the basics basic, this, this is called as exchange rate mathematics, but very essential for solving questions. The other theories like I double PT, triple PT, and then what is translation risk, transaction risk, everything I'm going to discuss. And it's very easy. If you understand this part that we have done today, if you're comfy with this, then, you know, those basic stuff you can easily understand. Okay. So let's finish today. Let's end for today. And uh, before that, your assignment. So what countries can I go for? <clears throat> Let us say, um, Garima is in Australia and buys goods from Sarvesh. I'll take my name. Buys goods from Sarvesh in, I would like to go to Netherlands. Come on. In Netherlands for, now in Australia, we have Australian dollars and in Netherlands, we can use euros. All right. But focus will be on Garima. The question will be from her perspective. So Garima is in Australia and buys goods from Sarvesh in Netherlands for euros. Okay. The Netherlands, the Dutch currency, euros, uh, whatever the amount doesn't matter. 100,000 to be paid immediately. She buys goods from Sarvesh in Netherlands for 100,000 euros to be paid immediately. The spot uh, euros or rather Australian dollars oblique euros will be equal to 1.6789 dash 1.6833. Just random rates. Calculate the amount of Australian dollars, a dollars are Australian dollars to be paid by Garima to acquire euros. She needs to acquire, right? She needs to buy euros to make the payment to me and she's in Australia. So she will have to buy euros. So how many Australian dollars will she have to pay to the dealer? That is the question. You can take a snap of this if you want. Noted? Is the question noted? Okay, now I'll take another two minutes, two to three minutes. What will happen? 
now we are starting with risk management okay now the core topic what will happen in case one the first question for today if mr a receives this 100000 not immediately but after say 3 months 3 months credit period has been given to mr b so it's a receivable 100000 receivable after 3 months what will happen what will come into picture risk will come into picture foreign currency risk okay foreign currency risk now i'll give you a very simple example in another minute or so and think about it and keep that at the back of your mind so that tomorrow we can start off from there so garima she is just hanging around in the mall okay so just thinking of you know if i find some good dress maybe i'll pick it up okay i'll buy it she she wants to buy a good dress so she's just hanging around in the mall and she comes across a dress and she really liked it the price of the dress is let us say 2000 rupees i'll talk in indian rupees okay because i'm not talking about exchange rate right now i'm talking about the concept so let us say the price of that dress is 2000 rupees which she really liked and what is the date when she was in the mall the date was let us say uh whatever mm, 15th october the date was 15th october or rather 25th october Twenty fifth October. That was the date. Guys, are you with me? Are you listening to the? I hope I am audible. Yes, yes. Okay. So the price of this dress is two thousand rupees on twenty fifth October, and Garima really liked that dress and she wants to buy it, but she is. very sensible in her financial decisions she is studying acca right so she says now let me apply my concepts let us be financially prudent okay so garima thinks uh, do i really need this dress now no i am not in need of any dress right now but i liked the dress and i want to buy it that's for sure i want to buy it but i don't need it now when do i need it i need it on the new year party or maybe christmas party she has planned a party with her friends and she wants to wear a new dress but what's the point in buying the dress today and paying 2000 rupees she is taking classes from mr sarvesh who teaches financial management right and he often talks about opportunity cost and garima is very happy with that concept she says if i withdraw 2000 rupees from my bank to make a payment i will lose the time value of money i lose interest how much the rate of interest of bank gives is 7% per annum oh my god i'll start losing 7% per annum if i swipe my card today itself i don't want to pay 2000 rupees because i have learned something very valuable in fm opportunity cost so i'll not make the payment today that's for sure i want the dress but i'll not make the payment i want the dress on 25th december after 2 months but there is a trouble here garima is worried now what what is the concern of garima can anyone identify what will be her concern she wants to buy she says i can come back to this mall again on 24th december maybe and buy the dress but what will be the concern so concern is a very important word here and that concern is called as risk in finance no the dress will be available don't worry the dress will be available there will be no stock out same dress same brand same color everything will be same but maybe the price won't be the same because it's a party time right it's a new year time 
So anything can happen to the price. Maybe discounts can also be offered, or maybe this dress is so popular that demand goes up and prices also go up. Anything can happen to the price. So Garima is worried about Garima is worried about specifically rise in prices. Do you agree? I hope this is clear. She is worried about a rise in prices. Whereas this dealer, let us say I am the dealer, Mr. Sarvesh, okay, who teaches FM, and also he has a, you know, outlet in this mall, okay. So he is worried about fall in prices. He is worried about fall in prices. You know why? Yes, yes, Fatima, you may leave, but I'll complete this topic and then I'll close down because from tomorrow I'll take it off from here. But you can leave. So, Sarvesh is worried about fall in prices. By the time it's 25th December, and if I will have to, I'll be forced to give some discounts, but I've already purchased the stock. No, that means my profit margin will go down. I have purchased the stock and now I have to offer discounts. That means Fall in prices is a concern for me. Do you all agree? Do you all agree? Have you understood this? For Garima, rise in prices between 25th October and 25th December, rise in price in these two months is a concern, is the risk. For Mr. Sarvesh, fall in price is the risk. That's it. This is the thing you need to always keep at back of your mind. That buyer, one who wants to buy, always worries about appreciation in prices. And I'm using some technical words. The buyer is always worried about appreciation in prices. The seller is always worried about depreciation or fall in the prices. That's it. That's it for today. With this backdrop, with this background in your mind, let's conclude for today. But this is the thing I'll ask you again tomorrow. And we have not discussed anything, you know, some new thing or you already know these things. That's why I give you the example of mall and all that stuff. Whenever you want to buy something, your risk is always the appreciation of prices. Logically, we have just seen, we have proved it. So Garima is afraid that this prices can go to 2,500 maybe 3000 that will be a loss that will be a loss for her and for mr sarvesh maybe the prices will go to 1500 or maybe 1200 by the time it's 25th december the prices may go down this is my worry this is my concern guys is it clear have you understood this this is the starting point of risk management from here on, we are going to learn risk management. So instead of dress, now pay attention. Last one line, instead of dress, if you have understood this for dress, you should understand it for foreign currency. Replace dress with foreign currency, same rules. Replace foreign currency with gold, same rules. Replace gold with stocks, bonds, shares, any asset, any asset, same rules, same fears, same concerns, Buyer will always fear appreciation. Seller will always fear depreciation. That's it. If you have understood it for dress, you can understand it for foreign currency. You can understand it for bonds. Clear? Can we stop for today? Our lectures will be little longer because you know it takes time for basics to be understood many a times, but still it's okay. It's worth. All right. Can we stop? Thank you so much, Elza, Garima, and also Fatima. Thank you. See you tomorrow.